when you think about breast reconstruction, you think about two major categories either autologous reconstruction, which is using your own tissue, or implant reconstruction, which is using basically an implant to reconstruct the breast. And then there's sort of a combination of using autologous tissue and an implant. For the first goal is that they are able to go through their life and get dressed and wear clothes and to the public and to the rest of the world and they want to they want to feel and look and be normal but then there's also how they feel to themselves how they feel when they get up in the morning how they feel you know after they take a shower and they're looking in the mirror how they feel to their you know spouse or significant other or lover or, whom, or whomever and so our goal is to get the reconstruction to look as absolutely closely as possible to the normal breast uh, in, in every way. If you are using your own tissue, you can create the natural droop of um, any normal woman's breast who's over the age of 20, has sort of a natural droop to it. Um, if you are using implants, then an implant really doesn't have any droop. And so even in a young sort of perky breast, you have to do something to lift it in terms of symmetry. Well, when you're thinking about you know, the most common uh, autologous or using your own tissue choice for breast reconstruction, you think about abdominal flaps. The three different types of tissues that we typically use to reconstruct the breast um, are the back flap, which is also called the latissimus, the belly, which is the most common, and there are, there are different ways of doing that, to either taking no muscle or a little bit of muscle or a lot of muscle. That's most commonly called the tram flap. And most people who have a little extra belly are very happy to use that because it gives them a tummy tuck in addition to having their breasts reconstructed. And then finally, the uh, buttock flap, which is not commonly used, um, but can be very successful if those other donor sites are not available. After abdominal flap breast reconstruction, the patient should be able to do everything in terms of exercise or all activities. It may take a couple of months to get there, but they should be able to do everything. If you take both abdominal muscles which, um, and do a pedicled flap, uh, the abdominal, the, the sort of integrity of the abdominal wall will be very much affected. Uh, that's not typical. We, t we tend to not do that operation. We try to take as little muscle as possible and usually take, you know, sort of a cuff of muscle about this big, if at all. The less the operation takes out of the abdomen, the less likely there's going to be any problem. And the deep flap essentially takes no tissue in terms of the muscle and the fascia, which gives your abdominal wall strength out of the abdomen. So they should be able to get pregnant and there should be a very low uh, incidence or likelihood of any problems. It's D-I-E-P, and it's Deep Inferior Epigastric Perforator Flap. And it's basically taking, the, the blood supply is the same as the muscle sparing free tram flap, which is the Deep Inferior Epigastric Artery but we're taking perforators between the skin and the fat and that vessel. The, the, those are the communicating vessels that give the blood supply to the skin and the fat.